Welcome to Finn, a high-quality executive and personal assistant available as a cloud service. In this screencast, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Finn. I'll show you how to send requests to your new assistant, how Finn integrates with email and calendar, how to customize your preferences, how to set up recurring requests, and finally, how billing works. So let's head over to Finn.com. This is the page that you'll see after you've set up your account and log in. Over here on the left are requests I've recently sent to Finn, and over here on the right are all the different ways I can send new requests to Finn. I can email Finn, text or call, I can send requests via our iOS app or Slack, and I can also contact my account manager. When you email Finn, it works just like emailing any other colleague or a traditional assistant. Type in Finn's email address, you ask what you need. So in this case, can you get me a flight to Phoenix next week on Tuesday, leaving from Oakland around 7 a.m., returning from Phoenix around 8 p.m.? This is all I have to do. Finn will understand exactly how to do this work. It has my credit card on file. We'll book the right flights and take care of everything and add it to my calendar without really any other work from me. Um, another more complicated workflow that I do a lot of, and many Finn users do a lot of, is scheduling. So here's an example of what that looks like. This guy, Kent, asked to schedule a call with me. I looped in Finn to get something on the calendar. From this point forward, Finn takes over, looks for free times on my calendar, suggests a few to Kent, confirms them, gets all the details, and adds them to the calendar event without me being involved anymore after this initial email. Now, Finn has access to read my calendar so it can see when I'm free or busy and also add to my calendar. This is what this event would look like once it's added to my calendar. As you can see, it's like clearly titled with uh, the type of meeting, the guest name, my name. Um, Finn knows to put the call number for the person that I'm supposed to call in the details. If this was a physical meeting, Finn would add the location here. He also adds all the attendees. He does everything that you want to have this on your calendar in a really clean, nice way. Um, so to see a little bit more about how this works on the back end, let's look at my preferences. So here are my preferences for calendar. To get here, you go to Finn.com, click on this prefer preferences tab, and you get this menu over here of all the different preferences that you can configure for telling Finn exactly how you want it to do each type of request for you. So under calendar, you can see I have different preferences for different types of meetings. So for personal meetings, in-office meetings, coffee meetings, service appointments. Um, for my, for my um, preferences for work calls, they go on my work calendar, not my personal calendar. I can specify the event format. In the description, you can see here that there's a template for how I want this to show up, which also specifies that I'm supposed to call the other person. And Finn knows then it needs to get the contact number for that other person to complete this. And knows the default meeting length is 25 minutes, not 30 minutes as uh, you might have it. Um, and then here again, I just have this extra explicit instruction. Always get the number from the person I'm supposed to call and include it in the description. So here you can see I can, I can type in exactly how I want to set up calls versus any other type of meeting. I can also configure all sorts of other preferences. So here, for example, are my grocery ordering preferences. I have my preferences for ordering orders from Amazon. There's my Amazon login, the delivery address, which is my work address, not my apartment, the uh, payment method I want to be used for this account. And then I have Instacart preferences with my Instacart login, delivery address. I could have this, for example, default to delivering to my apartment if I wanted it there instead of my office. Um, I also have my payment methods saved for this account, so Finn knows how to pay for any purchases that it makes. Now, all these logins um, and any sort of sensitive information that you don't just want stored as a raw preference can be saved in our vault, which integrates with the preferences. But this is like a separate section of our site with extra security features um, where I can store sensitive information like my Amazon login, Good Eggs login, uh, my health insurance information, driver's li license information, really any sort of personal information that Finn needs to do work on my behalf gets stored here. And then there's a, a log of any time it's accessed and what request it was accessed in order to complete. OK, let's now take a look at recurring requests, uh, which is another cool feature of Finn. To get here, go to Finn.com, click on My Request at the top, and then Recurring in this tab here. You can see some of my recurring requests that I have set up. So I have Finn booking me an annual physical once a year, and I say I use one medical, all my info is in the vault. Uh, good times to do this generally or the, this day of the week at this time in the morning, and the month of the year I typically like this done. Another recurring request I'm a huge fan of personally is this weekly phone sync. This is something that we recommend all users do with their Finn Assistant. So every Monday morning at 9 a.m., my Finn Assistant will give me a call on the phone. We'll both pop up my calendar, look at what I have coming up that week, and try to brainstorm ways that Finn can take things off my plate. So for example, if I have some travel coming up and I have a flight, maybe Finn will suggest uh, booking me a rental car or a hotel if I don't have that done yet. It's a really great thing to do to kind of get started with the week and offload a bunch of work immediately so you can focus on more important things. Okay, now let's talk about billing. So the way you can view your uh, current statement at any time is to go up here on Finn click on your profile, and then go down to this billing tab. And um, what you see once you click on that is your current statement. So you can see a brief summary of all the different work that Finn has done for you, as well as the amount that you've spent on any given uh, request that Finn has worked on for you. Um, the great thing about the way billing on Finn works is you pay only for exactly what you need. So unlike if I had a full-time assistant where I would have to pay for 40 hours of work to be done every week, whether or not I actually have 40 hours of work for my assistant, um, I only pay for exactly the tasks that I need done. And these, these bills come in per task. More complicated tasks cost a little bit more money than less complicated tasks. So a good example of this is if you ask for a simple two-person restaurant reservation at a specific restaurant, that'll be relatively cheap because Finn can just call the restaurant and ask for the reservation. Whereas if you ask for several options for eight people for a Korean barbecue on Saturday night, and Finn has to do a bunch of research and then coordinate with eight different people, there'll obviously be a lot more work involved in that, and it'll cost a little bit more money. But the billing is totally flexible. 
I generally spend about a thousand dollars a month on my thin assistant, which is far cheaper than full time assistant, and also far cheaper than even if I had a full time assistant that I split with one other person. Um, so I I really value the the flexibility of the billing personally and find it a really great investment. And I don't have any other sort of full time assistant that's something that's been thin as my only assistant. So that gives you hopefully a brief overview of how to get started using Thin, how the different features work, and how to start sending in requests. Hopefully you find the service valuable. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about the service, feel free to just email your Thin assistant or email founders at thinxpc.com. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch the screencast, and hopefully we can help you.